Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I want to talk to you about what you already saw on the title of the video. We are going to be talking about the uh, RX 5600 XT. And even though AMD uh, showed us our RDNA 3 a couple of days ago and their two flagship cards, many people are always looking for, you know, used or middle cards because well, their budget is adjusted. So they can be expending a thousand or sixteen hundred or two thousand and dollars on a video card and to be honest um too many people are always looking for that card that will allow them to keep playing a uh, very good resolutions and frame rate but spending uh the less amount of money possible right and you know i have to say i enjoy so much testing this sort of videos this is the 5600 xt i got and bought and i have to say I am loving this car, really. I never had any RDNA 1 car. I have RDNA 2, um, um, Polaris and other cars, but never had an RDNA 1. And I was thinking about buying the 5600 or the 5700. But then I thought, you know what? The 5600 is probably going to be cheaper to find and more people are going to be skewing towards that. So let's talk about how this car be behaves in 2022. And literally, the first game I tested was Forza Horizon 5. And what a start for this little gem of a car, because I was not expecting this sort of performance. Well, I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest. So I started setting this game on 1440p Ultra, thinking I will have to adjust resolution or quality, and that was not the case. This game just ran super well. It's true, this game is super, super well optimized, but when you think this game runs on the, on the actual consoles and R RDNA 2, I was expecting this to not behave as good as it did. Um, I have no issues, no stutters, no problems whatsoever, which is something that AMD, from my point of view, do, do better than Nvidia, and uh, is that the frame time is uh, more stable. I find Nvidia to be more all over the place, so you need to use limits, otherwise it doesn't feel as smooth. And in this case, this game runs flawlessly on the 5600 XT. Then I um, started testing God of War because this, I think this is a game that looks phenomenal even uh, this day. And it's also quite um, demanding because I've seen many of the ETA Prime videos where he's always testing, you know, new stuff and the new APU. And I'm always like, this is the one that is going to run this game at 60 and there is always some short of problem, even at 1080p. However, we were able to put the game on high at 1440p using FSR quality, yes, but even so, I still think the performance is quite good as you can see we are over even close to 100 frames per second uh, sometimes and you will think oh, so why use fsr well I, I found some spots where the um frame was a little bit close to being lower 60 so i thought using fsr quality will you know iron those things out and well it did as you can see it's working phenomenally After that, I tested Red Dead Redemption 2. What is funny about this is that I was testing Red Dead Redemption 2 in sort of a high present and I was using FSR to get to a stable uh, frame rate, but I wasn't getting them. So I decided to move the preset to the middle one, uh, uh, the actual middle of the presence, which is balance, but the balance in the middle. And when you move that, it also removed the FSR. So at the, at the beginning I was like, okay, now I'm getting quite a good frame rate. And when I went to check, I realized I wasn't using even FSR for this one. So I was even more surprised. So this is a phenomenal game and you can still play on this card at 60 frames per second of 1440p, which no console can do at the moment, unless they decide ever to do like a patch for this game. But at the way it is, the only place to play at 60 FPS SPC and as you can see you can do that even with a 5600 XT at 1440p. This is a phenomenal looking game still today. Now for Modern Warfare 2 I decided to use the benchmark because I think it's a better reflection of actual gameplay and to not spoil the campaign to any of you because of some of the games I play very advanced and then I record other parts just to not spoil to you. In this case you can see that you can play a very good frame rates even a 4040p balance. I know many competitive players are going to lower the resolution and the quality so well you can see how this behaves. I had to move the texture to high because when you select a balance it lowers the 
texture to normal but you can still get high textures uh, on this card even if it's limited uh, by only six gigabytes so that's a, a plus in here so you can do that manually and as you can see the game runs very good always over 80 uh, 70 fps no problems whatsoever you can lower the quality or the resolution if you need more frames um, because you're playing competitive but this is sort of the behavior you're going to get on the single player campaign campaign too um, so yeah this is a very good result Dying Light 2 is a game I really like, but I really have to play because I probably have like 10 or 15 hours, but it's just testing. I need to play this game. I want to play this game because it looks either that has been optimized very well uh, after the uh, rough launch or it wasn't that demanding to begin with and we had it wrong because every game, every car I test on this, uh, I can you know play a very good quality in this case we're playing at maximum quality considering this card doesn't uh, support ray tracing at 1440p yes i'm using fsr quality instead of ultra quality but it still looks very good and plays over 60 fps i try to push the card so you can know what to expect if you want to take this to um, to this level obviously if you're going to play a 1080p or a lower quality the car is going to behave even better or the game is going to have more frames so i think that's a logical conclusion that's why i tend to push the games as much as possible uh, spider-man 2 is one of those games where i could not get like a perfect stable frame rate it i don't know this game has the frame rate all over the place you know you can be playing at 58 55 frames and then go up to almost 100 i i don't know this game is so cpu dependent and something you know, it's, it's, it's not right from my point of view and the way the games behave I'm hoping that with the next Spider-Man Mile Morales maybe they, they have figured it out and it's, Apache is also coming for this one in any case uh, I, th this doesn't mean the game is unplayable or anything it's just that it's not as stable as I want to but as you can see here with the 5600 XT you can play this game no problems above 60 FPS yes you're going to maybe have an occasional dip here or there but I think that's not a big deal yes this game is not using ray tracing because this card doesn't support as i said before but i still think that the results are quite good considering what we, uh, the quality of the game we have the resolution and the performance we're having so yeah this is a very fun game and finally the only game i could not play at 60 fps no matter what well maybe if i play at 720p but i didn't want to try that so i had to leave the game at 1080p high and the reason i didn't uh, use a lower like 1080p low is because even at that you are not going to get 60 fps all the time so you're going to dip down to a uh, 50 fps so i thought well there is no point then just just leave it a high and have a better quality ex uh, video experience if the game supported fsr maybe we could get to 60 um, because uh, I know we can get uh, above 60 with this CPU. So unfortunately, this is this was the only game I could not. But considering the RX 5, uh, 580 can play this game uh, above 30 FPS, I would say we are almost doubling the performance of that car. So that's not a, a bad result for this 5600 XT. So I'm actually quite impressed by this little car. So now that you saw the benchmarks, you know, um, I think this car is phenomenal. Really, I think I, I wasn't expecting that. I, you know, I never paid too much attention to this 5600 XT, and I love testing middle cars and old cars because I have an RTX 4090, and the reason for that is mostly to be able to show you the games at their best quality possible also i play a 4k 144 so obviously that you know that the, i need a very beefy card but the reason i love like all generation cards or you know middle to low end uh tier cards is because you know you feel you're squishing that investment more like you're getting the most out of your box you know you pay for something you want to get the more out of it the more possible you know when you put a, a game on a 1490 all you do is just put the maximum settings and everything and you forget about it you don't have to play with uh, settings or anything which i love doing I, it, it seems contradictory but i love um you know having to play with the settings and find that perfect balance where i think i'm getting the most out of my gpu and the only way to do that is when you know you you have these sort of cards because High-end cards is just do and um, forget on, mo on most games at least. So I, 
this um, trend where I have high-end GPU cards is not something that I was, um, you know, growing up. I always was middle tier, low tier. I never had like top tier cards. So I always used to love that. Um, you know, life and fortune has allowed me to have this, you know, the possibility to buy the best car and so on. And that I, I, I am grateful for that, but I enjoy so much playing with these sort of cards. And after seeing the benchmark for this car, I have to say it's, I really loved it. And well, the particular model I got, I didn't know it was this big. When I am going to buy a, a video car or, or a used video car, I normally don't care about the model or anything like that. I just want to be, for example, if I want a 5600 XT, I go and I said, well, I am not going to pay more than X amount for this car. So I start looking for what is around those prices and I buy, you know, whatever I can. The first one I get for that price, then I get. So this one, I was very lucky because it's a very big and beefy car as you can see it's, it's quite enormous but I love it I think it's a great car and if you are looking for a low to middle tier car I use one all one I think this is a very very good video car for uh, any sort of game as you saw I was pushing 1440p because I think you know that way it will allow you to uh, see that you if you're playing at 1080p well this car is going to deliver because I'm pushing the car as hard as I can and the car really as I said surprised me a lot and I I really like this car, I have to say. I think uh, at the time when it came out, it would have been a very good um, investment if you were looking for a low invest, um, you know, low price car. But right now, I think it's even better because I, you can get this for between 120 and 140 dollars, maybe even less. I'm not sure. I got this from 130, 35 dollars. I don't remember exactly. Um, doing do, because I I bought it in pounds, so I need to do the change. But that was around the, the price I paid for it. So if you can get a car for around $120 to $130, I think you are going to have a very good time playing with this. The only problem I may say is maybe the six gigabytes of RAM, which you may think is going to be short, but I don't think that's going to affect you in the long run. Uh, um, because obviously you are not going to be playing 4K or anything like that. And you always can lower some settings to get the VRAM allocation correctly. So I don't think that should be a problem, at least for the next two or three years, as long as you're playing 1080p and are willing to, uh, you know, lower some settings from time to time to be able to allow it. But that doesn't mean that when the RAM is not, you know, if your uh, video card is not full for the RAM, that is going to um, just not work. What it's going to mean is that the could be some stuttering some in places while the RAM is swapping information. So that's also something you have to test game by game. But anyway, I'm going to close this here, just telling you that I love the 5600 XT and I think it's a great car if you're looking for an all upgrade, like an RX 50 uh, 580 because this car is basically double the, 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 the performance. And if you have an old an even older car, well, I don't need you to, to explain to you that I don't think you're going to get as many power for car for that price as this one, considering even a 350 is going to cost you at least $280. So for my money, this is an awesome card. Um, of course, um, if you can go higher, well, there is the 5700 X, uh, XT. So that's another possibility. But in this video, I show you the 5600 XT. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.